At 18 weeks old, most babies are just starting to get developed, so they measure just 2 inches long from the top of the head to the rump, about the size of a prune. This means they aren't ready to be born yet. If they do come out, it only spells danger. When this baby's mother held his tiny and fragile body in her hands, what she saw next shocked her. In March 2015, Matt and Charity learned they were expecting another child. They were so elated and could not wait to break the news to their older children, Ryan 8 and Kaylee 5. So, they gave the kids a bag with baby socks, swaddling blankets, and a framed ultrasound picture and asked them to guess what the items meant. Without even needing a second to ponder, Ryan said, Baby stuff. You are pregnant? He added, flashing a grin, with his delighted eyes fixed on his mother's belly, and the couple screamed a loud yes. The family's joy was over the roofs, and everyone couldn't wait to meet the baby. On different occasions, Charity and her husband dreamt vividly about a child who would bring something special to them. In the dreams, both of them saw a boy, so even before they went for a gender reveal, they had a powerful instinct that they were having a male child. In the dreams, the couple didn't get the chance to learn what special thing their unborn baby was bringing to them, but all that just made them even more eager to meet the boy. But while they thought they would have to wait nine months, unfortunately, this baby came earlier than expected. One night, some 18 weeks into Charity's pregnancy, she woke up with a start, experiencing contractions that got more painful as time went by. That was unusual, so she felt something was very wrong. Could she be in labor just when the baby was in its fourth month? Her heart sank at such scary thoughts. Looking beside her, Matt was deeply asleep, so she tapped him. The baby could be coming, she said, her eyes shining with terror. Hearing such words, Matt sprang to his feet. He cupped his wife's sad face and told her all would be okay. But would it? Matt quickly rushed to the kids' rooms and he woke them up and said, Mom needs your help and we have to go to the hospital now. Although the kids were still drowsy, they understood what he meant and rushed into the car, holding their hands. Matt drove at a high speed while glancing occasionally at his wife and telling her to hang in there. But all Charity could think of amidst the intense contraction and extreme nausea were the events that led up to this critical moment. You see, before this dreadful night, a month after Charity became pregnant, something critical happened. She was bleeding nonstop. The bleeding only kept getting heavier as each day passed. When this happened, Charity thought she was having a miscarriage. However, when she went to the hospital, that wasn't the case. Instead, the doctors diagnosed her with placenta previa, a condition in which the baby's placenta attaches itself to the wrong place in the uterus and covers the cervix. However, sometimes this condition often corrects itself, but in worst cases, the woman would have to undergo an emergency C-section, especially if the baby made it to the 24th week, at least. In this case, the baby had a good chance of surviving. Unfortunately, Charity continued bleeding. The doctors had no explanation for this, as a scan had shown that the baby's mouth, nose, and ears were perfectly formed. In fact, during one of the couple's numerous trips to the hospital, one doctor made a disturbing suggestion. He asked the couple to consider terminating the baby, as the frequent bleeding could put Charity's life at risk, but that wasn't an option for them. Charity and Matt believed there was nothing wrong with their baby. They had seen his physical features in the scan, so they didn't care what the doctors thought. Their baby was beautifully formed, for all they cared. My baby had its own life, its own beating heart, and was alive and had potential. Taking all that away was not something I could do. Getting to the hospital, Matt pulled the car to a rough stop, and that jerked Charity back to reality. When she attempted to come out of the car, she couldn't even walk because of the intense pain. So Matt lifted her into a wheelchair and wheeled her into a room where doctors and nurses quickly intended to her. They performed an ultrasound, and it showed the baby had descended and was ready to come out. Once again, Charity was deep in thoughts. Her mind was crowded with fear and grief when she felt someone tap her, saying, Push. Really? Push? How could she push out a four-month-old baby? How would that even look? Would he come out alive? Pushing wasn't an option. I didn't want to push because I just wanted him to be okay, and that meant him staying inside me, she said. 
Although Charity would have loved to keep the baby inside of her for as long as she could, sadly, nature took its course. And within a few minutes, she pushed out a tiny, fragile baby who was still wrapped in his protective amniotic sac. The little boy didn't cry or move the moment he came out. The doctors concluded that he was born dead, as they had not been able to detect a heartbeat during the ultrasound scan. One nurse opened the amniotic sac and asked the devastated couple if they would like to see his body, and they agreed. Filled with anguish, the parents held the little boy. Despite how premature he was, his parents thought he still had the most beautiful face they had ever seen. Nevertheless, his condition was heartbreaking too. Tiny red veins were running throughout his almost transparent body. His skin was so moist and delicate that it began to stick to the blanket. So the nurses had to lay him on plastic to protect his skin. Lost in a beautiful yet tragic moment, the parents continued to stare at the boy until they noticed something unbelievable. For a moment, the boy's chest rose and fall. His heart, although fragile, was beating. The parents called the nurse's attention to this, but they were told it was just electrical impulses and the boy didn't stand a chance. Unfortunately, they were right. Even though Matt and Charity also knew the boy would pass away at any moment, they felt something beautiful seeing his heartbeat. They knew somehow deep down the boy was still hanging in there. The couple believed God just gave them that precious opportunity so they could meet their child alive and bid him goodbye. Right there, they named him Jackson, and afterward, they decided he should meet his elder siblings before life slipped out of him. When Ryan and Kaylee came into the room, they had to fight back their tears. They didn't want their brother to be surrounded by sadness as he departed the world. For the next 30 minutes, the family spent time with the boy, holding him, caressing him gently with soft, sweet kisses. It was a really peaceful experience that we at least were able to be together as a family with a little boy just that one time. This was something special that we will cherish forever, Charity said. Eventually, the boy's time was up and all signs of life faded away. A few days later, he was buried in a white outfit his mother made for him. The family who are Christians believe they will be reunited with Jackson again. Charity also would never have got the signs of life she saw in her son. To date, she hopes Jackson's story will give a face to the countless babies who have been aborted at such an age. I want to be able to show others that even at 18 weeks old, the preborn baby is very much alive and very much a whole person. I want people to see that even when they are the tiniest babies like my Jackson, they are real, living, breathing people who are precious and who deserve all our love and respect. They are just as much a person as anybody else is, she said. Even after the boy's departure, his family still speaks about him often. Charity and Matt also got to understand the meaning of the dreams they had. They figured out that Jackson's presence was to teach them and every other person the value of life. What kind words do you have for baby Jackson?